So what you just saw was another application of where the revolver shines over a semi-automatic. For me, I'm having to come in, grab the back of the slide, and especially on a 1911, make sure I've got enough room in there for that hammer to freely hit. Now on a striker fire gun, you wouldn't have to worry about this. You could just hold on to the back of it, break that shot. But the reality is, is that when you start looking at how long it was taking me, round goes off i've got to cycle the gun again and re-grip it break the shot round goes back off i get it there's a lot of steps that are involved in that and that's costing time it's also costing me the use of my left hand at that point because i have to do certain things in order to get that shot off correctly yeah, the nice thing about the revolver is i can run it in a close contact situation with one hand so it's leaving me my off hand to potentially guide something out of the way trap an arm trap a neck and arm together while still delivering those rounds onto the target you know in the in the close contact situation like that the one thing you do have to remember about a revolver if you jam it in way way deep into a potential adversary or an adversary you can get some clothing wrapped up in the cylinder that's something that can happen it's pretty rare but something to realize so that when you do make that contact shot get the the revolver in contact but don't drive it super hard into the target just get it up there, press the trigger, and it'll roll like it's supposed to. You can certainly see uh, not only did Drew have uh, the use of his left arm and hand, but the speed, the amount of rounds you can dump on target really quickly. And when we start looking at uh, crowded uh, areas uh, where you know you have a lot of people congregating, uh, an example would be like a church. I already have to come in just to make that shot. <clears throat> There's a high probability that I'm going to have to close that gap on that person in order to do it and then not only have to contend think about this not only do I have to contend with a close proximity shot holding on to the rear to slide but we have a trajectory issue which means I'm coming in and trying to hold this gun at a weird angle in order to break that shot off whereas with the revolver I don't have to do that I can concentrate exactly on what I need to yeah, with the revolver I'm able to come in if I need to change that angle for a crowded environment either down or potentially change the angle up if that's a safe direction for a pass through round to go in then I can do that really easily with the revolver just by simply changing the angle of the muzzle. The other place it really shines at is in the law enforcement arena if I'm coming up and my partner's on the ground with somebody they're fighting over a gun it's a deadly force situation. I run into the same thing with my striker fire pistol that Chris does. I may get one round and then I've got to use both hands clear that and get back in the fight again whereas maybe i roll to my pocket five shot for this application and now i've got five rounds at a contact distance that i can change angles as i need to and they're going to go off like they're supposed to one of the other things that you can do which is kind of unique to the 1911 is finger on the trigger thumb on top of the safety press the muzzle in and break off at least that first shot. So the 1911 has some other attributes, finger on the gas, thumb on the thumb safety, drop the safety, gun goes off. Stand by. Point six seven. Point six seven first shot. So have you ever been in a scenario where you're in line at a grocery store or you're at a 7-Eleven or you're in a Walmart parking lot, you're at a gas station and somebody approaches you and your caution indicator lights start to go off? One of the things that we start to consider now is, well, if the situation starts to evolve into a deadly force situation, trying to access and, and, and get to our gear. And in some cases, unfortunately, what we may have to do, and we better hope that there is this potential lull when the person comes out with a firearm or a blade or something like that. Most of us know we want to handle this before we're going to anything else. However, are there other things that we can do out there to pre-stage in a non-threatening way that also allows us that speed and flexibility to be able to gain an advantage if all of a sudden the situation changes? And that's what you're going to talk about next. Yeah, if that happens, I'm standing here right now in a pretty casual profile and unbeknownst to whoever is approaching me, I actually have a full firing grip on the five shot in my pocket. So it becomes very easy if I need to, to address that deadly threat situation. 
Revolvers are very nice for this application because as they come out of the pocket, especially a hammerless one like this or one with a bob hammer, they're pretty snag free, nice rounded profile. Autos can serve the same purpose. You just have to keep in mind that they might snag a little bit more coming out. You need to practice with it. You need to make sure that the pocket holster you're running fits the application and fits the pockets that they're going into so that they either don't lock the gun up when they're coming out or potentially they don't come out with the gun and then necessitate stripping them off the front of the gun to get the gun into play.